Hi, I'm Miklos Kremzer, and I'm with Choice-Based Market Insights, and I got a lot of questions about various statistical techniques and market research techniques, and I thought I'd come and explain some of them, um, the pros and cons, and today I want to talk about max diff. How is this used? Um, what are some of the best practices about max diff? So max diff, a best worst scaling approach, is basically the way it works is survey respondents usually see a couple of questions, a, uh, a couple of items in a question, and they're asked, out of these items, which one is your favorite, which one is your least favorite, which one is the most valuable, or which one is the least valuable? And they pick one, and then these items go away, and another set of five items come, and then they pick the favorite and the least favorite. And they go on like this for a couple of, couple of screens. At the end of the day, at the end of the analysis, what you end up is all of these items, let's say a set of 20 items, 30 items, you get a ranking of all of them. Here's the number one, here's the number two, here's the winners, and here's the losers. That's basically how MaxDiff works, and it works perfectly. A good example where you can use something like this is for an ad agency who comes up with 30 taglines and they try to understand which one is the winning tagline, which, one which ones are the duds, which ones are the, are the, are the winners. Perfect example for, an, for, a, for a max diff. Um, now, um, how would you use it? Um, of course, you pick the winners and then you disregard um, the losers. Um, but why is, how is it different than just a simple ranking? Well, a simple ranking is here's all the things and just rank them. Here's your favorite, here's, your, here's number one, here's number two, here's number three. The big difference between a max diff and a regular ranking is that the max diff also gives you a distance. So while in a ranking you say here's the one that got the most votes, the second most votes, you know, etc. In a max diff you can, you can tell here's the winner and then there's a big gap between the winner and the second place and then the third one is right after the second place, neck and neck. So there's a clear winner, there's neck and neck, there's another big gap. So an agency and a marketer will clearly see, you know, this is the number one. Or if there's neck and neck in the, on, the, on the top, then they understand that, hey, these two are somewhat interchangeable, probably very similar. That's how, it, that's the big advantage of a, of a, of a max diff. Um, so I'm going to give you three tips about max diff, and these are see there are three things to keep in mind when you're doing a max diff. Number one is a max diff works really well when you have about 30 items. If you have a lot more than 30 items, then you want to do some sort of exercise before the max diff to limit those those number of items to down to about 30 or so, and that is because uh, your your max diff is starting to become less robust if you have. Um, if you have more than 30, 30 items or so. For example, you can do a Q sort exercise before that. Here's all the items and just pick your top, top 20 and then those 20 will go into the Q sort exercise. Or you can also do an interesting thing called ma uh, bandit max diff and I'll talk about bandit max diff some other time. This is not the topic here right now, but these are ways that you can actually limit the number of items that you do. But one, I, one thing that I want to tell you is when an agency comes to you and it gives you 60 items, there's a good chance that the agency has not done its homework. They have not done their homework because a lot of times when you look at 60 items, you can intuitively tell which ones are the winners and which ones are the losers. Okay, so if they really don't know, they gave you 60 items to let the customers decide, they have not done their homework. You can go back and say, hey, you know what? That's a lot of items. I'm sure that you have an idea about what your top 20 or 20, uh, 30 are. Give me those. Tip number two is um, when you look at a, a list of max diff items in a question, how many items should you have, uh, have people picking out of? I usually limit, to about, limit it about to five and not more than five, maybe six if, my, if it's very necessary. But think about the process of customers going through and, uh, and making uh, elaborate um, evaluations about what's, what they like and what they don't like. It's very taxing for them. You know, they, you don't want to exhaust them. So you don't want to give them a lot of items to pick from. Um, the, the fewer the items, the easier it is for them to decide, this is my favorite, this is my least favorite. You know, preferably maybe three or four. That's probably the best approach. And number three, is speaking of difficulty for the respondent, the items should be quick, 
and easy to uh, understand. Nine out of 10 dentists recommend this brand. Very quick and easy tagline to understand. Don't give them a paragraph to read and then have them compare it to another paragraph and another paragraph. It's extremely exhausting for respondent, respondents and they get frustrated. And what you're risking is that they get fatigued and they don't give you good data. They give you poor data and what you end up analyzing is useless. So if you have a paragraph, you know, your agency gave you and says, hey, here's an expl explanation of, a, of the benefits. Tell them to go back, give me the gist of the benefit, and then respondents will pick their favorite benefit. And then once we have the favorites, the agency can um, dress it up and make it more um, marketable or, ad or advertising sounding. But in a max diff, just put the quick snip snippets of benefits in there. So these were the three quick things about MaxDiff. MaxDiff is a fantastic exercise uh, for statistical analysis. And um, let me know if, the, if uh, in the comments if you have any uh, questions, concerns, I'd be more than happy to, uh, um, to reply to your questions. Thank you.